Good morning, everyone. And we are finally live. We've had a couple of little tech glitches getting this masterclass up and running, but we are finally live in the Rockstar Productpreneur Group. And today we are running a session on how to get free PR in major media. And I'm really excited to uh, be joined by Jules Brook of Handle Your Own PR and Emma Vidkin. Where, where are you working now, Emma? Because I should have had your bio up in front of me, but I know you're a fabulous journalist. <laughs> uh, I'm currently uh, the co-founder uh, and head of content for The Wayward, which is a wellness and lifestyle website. Cool. And a freelance journalist with Body and Soul and Marie Claire. Yeah, fantastic. And I know you've worked in some other big magazines in the past that people would be familiar with as well, yeah? Yes, yep. I used to be the editor of Real Living. I think that's uh, on the hit list of many of my audience, that's for sure. So we've got a few people starting to join us, which is fantastic. So when you join us uh, on the live stream, say good day under the video. And as we go, please feel free to post any questions that you have uh, as we have our conversation. So uh, I'm not going to muck around after we, we wasted a couple of minutes <laughs> trying to sort out our tech. So let's crack on with it. Um, and I have a couple of questions for each of you. Uh, but let's start with you, Jules, and because Jules and I have uh, collaborated on and off over many years. I, I think I might have been one of your very earliest uh, customers with your Handle Your Own oh. PR platform, and that, so that's really, really cool. So tell us about PR and how we can do it, even if we're only a small business and we don't have lots of money to outsource and uh, hire an agency to do it for us. Right. Well, that to me is the perfect client for me. And I love helping people who are at the startup stage or don't have a whole lot of money because um, the reason why you would do PR is that it's free. So once you learn how to do it, um, it's really easy to do. And if you're going out to the lifestyle, if you've got products and you're going out to the lifestyle media and you, that means you want to get in maybe the weekend magazines um, in the newspapers, um, obviously all the lovely glossy mags, there are bloggers out there, there's things like style file and those sorts of things. Um, and then a lot of people don't think about the gift guides that happen on TV as well. So um, if you are in that situation, then the media is, and Emma I'm sure is going to back me up on this, desperate, desperate for content. Um, so all you need to do really is have a fantastic photograph because your photography is everything, particularly in the product space. So it's not worth um, cutting corners when it comes to photography. You really need to go and get those professional shots done. And then when you get a beautiful photograph and you just need to put um, some small information underneath. So you need to come up with some kind of a snappy headline and then explain in about two paragraphs what the product is, what it does and where people can buy it and what sizes it comes in or what colours it comes in, that kind of thing. And you can send that out to lots and lots of lifestyle magazines and newspapers and they don't mind. So firstly, they don't need an exclusive. So it's unlike other PR that you can just send it out and um, they are all looking at on it, looking for those sorts of things for those products that are cool things we love this month, um, featured products of the month. Look what we found, you know, those kind of ones where they do um, they do talk about products. And the other thing that you can do is contact the stylists and start getting yourself getting your products into those photo shoots where they do up a lounge room and they definitely want candles in the corner and they want the cushions and they want the pictures on the wall. So the way to do that is to just contact the magazine editors, ask them who their stylists are, get in contact with the stylists. And then what the stylists do when they get given a brief is they send out to their own little database. So that's why you want to be on their list and say, this is the image I'm trying to recreate or these are the colour products I want or whatever it might be. And they'll just shoot it out to a few people and you get the chance to send them your product and um, get it featured in those kind of styled up shoots as well. Mm, awesome. Uh, Emma, did you want to add to that, you know, about photography or samples or anything along those lines? Yeah, I, I just concur with what Jules said. Uh, photography is so, so important. And if you've got really beautiful professional styled shots, you're more than halfway there. I'd say you're 80, 90% of the way there. 
um, you'd really have to do a terrible pitch to not pique someone's interest. Um, as Jill said, we are always looking for content and now there's so many platforms that we need to fill. It's not just a magazine once a month anymore. You know, we're looking for things for Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, it, you know, the list goes on. Um, so there's never been more opportunities really to tap into lifestyle media and have your product featured. So it's, it's a good time to be on that side of the fence. Yeah. So with that being said, I mean, how frequently should uh, brands be sending their images in or, or contacting stylists or editors? Um, look, you don't want to be uh, too, um, too in their face because it can irritate editors if they're hearing from the same person all the time. Um, think about it um, just in a kind of common sense way like do you have something new to tell is there a new story are the images new is the product range new um, if you don't then I probably wouldn't be continuing to send the same images or same products just saying hey they're still here do you like them <laughs> um, because that might start to annoy some people and you know if they're having a really bad day they're just gonna go delete <laughs> we're human too yeah, <laughs> totally. But I think that's a really good point, though. If you have an online store, for instance, and you've got um, new products coming in every month, you should be sending those and, and decent photographs, as Emma said. Then you can go as frequently as you like, but it needs to be fresh each time. If you're sending something out and it's the same image, you'd only ever do one follow-up sort of email to say, did you see this? Were you interested? And if they don't respond to that one, I would move on and send them another one, which is... One of the reasons that I would say to people, if you are sitting on a whole lot of products or a product range, rather than putting everything into one media release or everything into one media pitch, I would take it product by product. Because what happens is if you send a selection of six products to a journalist, they will pick one and say, thanks very much. And they feature it. And then you go back and say, will you use any of the others? And they go, no, I've already picked that. I've picked the one I wanted. Whereas if you only give them the one choice and go one product at a time, you might get it picked up every time. Mm, cool. That's a good tip. Uh, and, and what, you know, what, what about the difference between, you know, the, the editorial type PR and just, you know, having the product shot itself or the product featured in a styled shoot? Who's that question for me or, or well, Emma? Go, let's go use for starters, Jules. All right. Um, I would say that when you've got products, it is harder to get a feature story. So what you need to have, if you want that kind of a story, is you're going to have to talk a bit about yourself probably or one of your customers. So in order to make that a story, you need to have left a corporate career and decided that, you know, even though you were in finance, that you love incense. And you've said, I mean, I had a woman that I was working with who had gone from being CEO of some massive magazine to doing incense sticks. Now, that's a, quite an interesting story for anyone yeah. to listen to. Yeah. Um, but if you haven't got an interesting backstory, then I would be focusing mainly on trying to get those product shots in because they work really, really well, those small stories. Yeah. Um, other big stories they'll do if you're an inventor, maybe, or perhaps you've had a customer or your product has made quite a dramatic difference to someone's life. Um, those are the kinds of stories they're looking for, in my opinion, but I want, I'm very interested to hear what Emma says. Um, but the, the just getting those shots in, um, either into the photo shoots or, or featured as a cool product, is very easy. And that kind of stuff you can kind of do, you know, you don't need a professional to help you to do that. That's just learn the style, understand how it's done and get decent shots done. And, and as Emma said, you're in pretty much. <laughs> so let her answer well, how to get a bigger feature story though. I'm interested to hear her answer. <laughs> so I guess that uh, there are a few different ways in. I'll start with styled shoots first because um, that was really the holy grail for brands to... Um, be included in a, you know an original shoot that we were creating at Real Living potentially on the cover that was the dream to get your cushion on the bed um, and really the way that you would do that is to develop a relationship with the stylist so um, the way that you would do that is obviously first of all work out who the stylist is and who is uh, creating the sort of shoots that you want to be included in so 
it sounds really obvious, but just pick up a copy of the magazine that you're interested in being in and really have a good read of it and see who is doing what, because some stylists will do the cover shoot and nothing else. Uh, whereas other stylists will do a lot of the stuff inside. So really make it your business to work out who you want to target mm. and then get in touch with them directly. Um, you know, you can try and meet them for a coffee. Uh, they are very busy, but, you know, it's always worth a go. You never know. Yeah. Um, I would recommend if you are a new brand and you can afford to do so, sending them a sample of, of your product so that they can see it in the flesh and really get a feel for it, particularly with homewares, you know, it is so tactile. Mm. So actually getting it in the hands of the stylist is really helpful. Um, and then I guess the other thing I would say is coming back to the photography thing, having really beautiful photography, um, showing your product in a styled setup um, set is going to show the stylist this is what it looks like it shoots well so if you you know using those on instagram or wherever else send those as well to the stylist so they can see this is what it looks like in situ it looks beautiful photographs well so um they would be my top tips for getting things in um an actual styled shoot in terms of um you know responding to call outs and things like that i would just say move heaven and earth to get the products to the stylists so they're often quite disorganized um well not disorganized but you know they're really up against it um yeah, they need it last minute yeah and they need it yesterday and if you can't get it there by you know in four hours then you're not going to get in i would say it is worth springing for the vip career like just throw everything at it because you can't buy the sort of publicity that you get from seeing something in a style shoot yeah so, yeah, that, that would be my, my, my main tips, I think, for in a styled shoot. And I might just leave it there because I'm mindful of time, unless you want me to go on with profile pieces. I, I think that, um, in, you know, so in my experience working with the kind of clients that I work with, uh, one thing that many of them are quite um, hesitant to do is to spend big dollars on anything and a, a style photo shoot is certainly a big investment. So, uh, and I think, you know, what might be helpful, and I don't know whether either of you can, can answer this in any sort of quantified way. I can speak from my personal experience, but you know, how, like, what's the potential that, you know, return for a, a brand to invest in this kind of stuff? Cause you know, for me personally, like I, I found, um, you know, I, I managed to get some pretty awesome uh, PR on, on, uh, major morning television and major you know news media and magazines and that sort of thing and it you know it did take a consistent effort on my behalf and you know we did the the styled photo shoots and you know we did paid advertising as well as you know the PR and all that sort of stuff uh, and it was a huge it really made a big difference to our bottom line but it's very hard to for, you know to convince brands to, to invest in that side of the business so you know, do either of you have experience that you can say, well, you know, this is the kind of potential return that you can get from PR? Absolutely, I can. Um, and um, I've actually got a really good example, which, which was a few years, there's two, here's two great examples, actually, um, because what it does is it gets the customers will, if they love what they see, they will find you wherever they are. One is I actually did some PR for a friend of mine who's a jeweller. And I managed to get it into, um, I think it's called Christmas Essentials. It's the Sydney Morning Herald and the Age, um, those little books they used to put out in, in the last week of November and the first week of December. Now, I hadn't been doing PR for very long in those days. And I actually sent it through with my logo at the top, her image and her description. And somehow or other, they got it all asked about tit. And they, <laughs> to use the technical term, and what they did was they put a be her beautiful photo of her ring with my name in there instead of her name. And I can't remember what the web address was, but it wasn't the right details. And I rang my friend and I said, I am so sorry. I can't believe we've managed to get it in. And they've got all the details wrong. And she said, you know what? 36 people have ordered already. They have found me. So they went and found the ring, found the image online and, and hunted her down from that. Yeah. Another one, I was working with a little product called a Mozzie Click, which is a thing that you can um, click on to mosquito bites and it makes the, the itch disappear. Now, it's only a 
$20 product. But we, um, again, in my early days, sent it to the West Australian. It got featured and they put my details in instead of... <laughs> but this has only ever happened twice, by the way. It's not that I do this all the time, but learn by your mistakes. They put my details in and we fielded 250 phone calls over the next week for people wow. asking where they could find the product. Yeah. So, and then I've also had two, I've had three products on the market. I've had um, a range of envelopes that I had in office works for about eight years. Now with that, I got that into um, the Australian gift guide, I think it's called, you know, it's the big sort of industry one. On the back of that, I had four distributors contact me and say, I do regional Australia, I do Pacific Rim, I do whatever, can I please distribute as well? So to go into the industry magazines were really good. And having got a couple of stories in there this month and the woman coming back to me going, can you give me more? I know that that's a really good place if you've got products as well to sort of start getting it out there. So the ROI, I think, and I've had things in home in the Herald Sun that we had our envelope range in there and that gave us a huge spike in sales as well. So it definitely works. You, you will, if you track it, you'll see the spikes that happen when something has appeared. Yeah. Um, and it's really good. And then of course, and then it's, and, and back this, and I was doing a lot of product PR before Facebook and Instagram and everything became the place to go. So the other beautiful thing about it is it doesn't even really matter nowadays what you know how much response you get out of the article although you will get some but it's what you can do with it and how much credibility it gives you when you go out on social media and go look we were featured in real living or look you know this is us being featured in vice magazine um it just people just kind of go oh well and here's another example i had a client who has a turkish towel business an online store and she's she did pr for I think she did it from November until um, the Reed Gift Fair in Melbourne. So that's, I think, February. Oh, February, yep. And she actually rang me and said at nine o'clock on the first morning after she'd done the PR, instead of there being crickets and, you know, just people wandering past, she had 10 people queued up ready to place orders because wow. they had read about her and then they knew she was going to be at the gift show. So it yep. works in lots of beautiful ways. That's sensational. Emma, did you want to add something to that as well? Oh, look, I would just say if you are balking at the idea of investing in photography, I really can't um, stress strongly enough how important it is. And also, um, you know, the images are not just going to go out to journalists and, and be used for PR. You know, you're going to be able to use them on your website. You're going to be able to use them on your social media. So they really are an investment in the brand. And it doesn't matter how beautiful your sheets are if you can't get someone's attention, you know, in a few seconds with a beautiful photograph, yeah, there's a lot of bedlin and companies out there. So you're just going to be feeling like you're screaming into the Grand Canyon and, and no one can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I would jump in and say, you know, there are lots of people out there now who are building their folios and all those sorts of things. So mm -hmm. I just had a photo shoot done last week by a photographer that was in a group, a startup group that I was in, but she said, I need to build my folio, who wants shots? And I was like, oh my God, I want them. But really uh, you don't have to throw thousands and thousands of dollars. If you use friends and family as your models, if you can use a bedroom, borrow a house of a friend, you know, to borrow the bedroom or the kitchen, that's the kind of thing I do. So I do that with clients. We go find somebody, somebody has a great kitchen you know, mm -hmm. that you can use or a great bathroom. You use your own kids, your friends, your friends' kids, or your, you know, a beautiful girl that you know as your model. And often people will do that just to help you. Yeah. Um, and then you get your photographer for maybe 500 bucks for a half day, something like that. And yeah. you just squash it in and make it work. But you will get great shots that you can use. And it doesn't have to be a $5,000 spend. Yeah, it. it can be much smaller. Just a couple of things. I just made a couple of notes from what Emma said as well. If you want to find the stylist in the magazine, so you are reading a magazine that you love and you can't find the stylist name, if you look along the spine or the very, very edge of the um, picture, there is normally on a photo shoot, there will normally be styled by and the person's name that you could then look up on Instagram or you could even ring you know, real living and say, who's, can, can you give me an email address for Mary Smith or whatever? 
The other thing is with samples, if you haven't got a lot of money, and I totally agree with Emma that you need to get them into the hands of people, but I wouldn't just send them out unsolicited if it was me, especially if funds are tight, I would be sending the beautiful photography with an example to the journalist and then ask them if they'd like a sample. And if they say yes, then chances are they're going to use it. So it's another way that you can tell that you might get coverage in that particular magazine or whatever. Yeah, fantastic. Um, now, I, I did have another question for you, Emma, if it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest benefits that I see, uh, you know, in, in con, you know, consistently pursuing PR for, for a brand is to really build that brand awareness because, you know, without people knowing that you exist, then, you know, it's very little chance that you're actually going to sell anything. So building an audience is human, humongously important, especially if you're in the early days of your business. But even when you're growing, you know, you always need more people in your audience. So when you start working in PR or working on PR as a strategy, you obviously need to choose media with the right audience. So could you give some advice to our watchers and listeners on how to choose media with the right audience? I'm sure <laughs> you have ways of sharing that kind of information. Yeah, look, and it's a great question um, because there is absolutely nothing more frustrating as a journalist than being sent pitches that are irrelevant or um, just have nothing to do with what you cover in the magazine, you know. So um, somebody pitching something that has to do with like parenting, um, you know, like a teething ring for a baby to real living, that would that would be very frustrating because they don't do parenting content. So the first thing I would say is go out and actually pick up some mags. And I know that when we do the workshops, often Jules, the, the people say, oh, I haven't bought a magazine in a million years. Well, if yeah. you haven't bought a magazine and you haven't <laughs> looked at it, then how are you, you know, hoping to know what's in there and, and who you should be targeting? Um, I guess in terms of like working out who their audience is and what their brand positioning is, um, one clever little trick is to go onto the website for the publishing house and see if you can download a media kit. Now, that's the sort of thing that they will send out to people who are interested in advertising. Um, you can usually download it for free because they're always trying to get advertising. Yeah. And that will give you a really solid um, detailed information as to who's actually buying the magazine. It will give you demographics, um, household income, and also the numbers of, you know, how many eyeballs are getting on the mag, which can be really helpful. Because um, I really believe with this new media, media landscape that we're working in where everything is so fragmented, more eyeballs aren't necessarily great if they're not the right eyeballs. I, I would, you know, really favour going to a niche publication where you know the people are going to be super engaged and really excited about sustainability if that's really important to your brand rather than going something mass like Women's Weekly. Yeah, totally. And that, yeah, that's such a good, good, um, such a, an important point to make as well, like really, really knowing exactly who your target audience is and um, really solidifying that first before you choose magazines to approach, which is the same approach that we will take if we're pursuing wholesale or, uh, you know, targeting online marketing and all that sort of stuff. We, we need to know who, who our audience is or who we want our audience to be. And then we need to go uh, to places where those people hang out. Um, and I guess, you know, from my perspective with looking at the kind of media that you might choose, you know, the other benefit of going more niche than huge mass publications as well is that those highly engaged audiences um, they really respect and look up to the the publication and the you know the the whether it's a blogger or a magazine or or whatever you know that they those highly engaged um, readers and and followers they really respect the you know that that uh, that media and um, and so a kind of like a you know, if you get your product placed in that media, then it's like a, an endorsement. So it's not you as an advertiser or a brand saying, my stuff's fabulous, you should buy it. It's somebody else who is well respected with your audience saying you should grab this thing. So really, really influential marketing. Um, can I just say, if you can't get, if you're in, say, a regional area or you don't have a really great magazine shop near you, um, because one of the things I totally agree with Emma is go into a magazine shop and have a look in the section 
for women or pets or whatever your your target is and see what those magazines are but if you can't get to one do think about going onto a website like i subscribe which is a magazine subscription website you can go in there and you can click on lifestyle and it'll give you 50 lifestyle magazines that are out at the moment or women or fitness or sport or, or pets or whatever so it's a really good way if you can't get to an actual magazine shop to have a look at see what are the magazines that are out at the moment and where are they in that particular niche that you're in and the same thing I think there's mag shop is another one I think um, yeah. but mm. they're free you just go on and have a look as if you're going to subscribe and just look under lifestyle media and see what's there and yeah. then it makes it easy to go and google the ones that go, go and google the details in Australia fantastic really cool tips so to, like we're coming to the end of our time so Jules did you want to give us a little uh rundown of your platform so just um I'll, I'll give it a little bit of an intro so Jules has a platform called handle your own PR so it's really ideal for for many of you guys who are in this group and watching this video and um you know like I said earlier it's something that I've used myself so if you are um at the point in your business where you either can't afford to to hire a uh, an agency to do your PR or you just feel like you know this, this is something I can do and I can fit into my my marketing efforts uh, so basically um, well, yeah basically you can contact journalists with your beautiful images and your media releases and all that kind of stuff so so tell us a little bit about the platform and you know what kind of products or brands would it suit and who you you know who you have on the other end waiting to receive this Beautiful. Oh, all right. So the platform has been set up specifically for small business owners. So it is very, it should be, uh, I believe it is very easy and intuitive the way it works. I've got a few, th I've got a few thousand journalists on there and they're all broken down into categories. So the way that it works is you can jump on, you click on say lifestyle media, then it, you come down, it'll say, do you want homewares, kitchens, you know, whatever it might be. Underneath that, I have you choose the media type. So do you want to go to magazines, newspapers, TV, radio? I think I've got industry magazines, um, blogs, that kind of thing. You choose what you want and then you get given a super specific list where you can say, okay, I've got fashion accessories or I've got children's fashion or whatever. You click on those and you build your own media contact list. Then uh, the next step takes you to a media release template where it says upload your logo here upload your image here put your headline in put your body copy and it's a bit like word so you can format it you can send yourself a test email to see what it'll look like but what it will do is format it into the type of format that journalists are used to getting and then uh, the next screen will take you to all the journalists that you've chosen now you get to see their phone numbers their names their email addresses i don't hide anything and you just click on the ones that you want to send a media release to. You, up comes a little widget that helps you write an introductory email that goes along with your media release and you click send and it goes out from your email address out to the journalist. So if they respond, they're going to respond directly to you. Mm -hmm. I've got another stage after that, which is super important and everyone needs to remember that you must do follow up. You've got anyone, any journalist that hasn't responded, send them just a, a gentle kind of you know, wondering whether you saw this, I thought it would be great for your readers kind of email. Um, and because we've got people that are only getting picked up on the second email, you really do need to send out that second one a few days later. And you can do all of that from the platform. Yeah. And, um, and I've kept it, I think, at an incredibly reasonable price of less than $400 for a year. But I know you've got a special offer that... Um, I do. Yep. I'll mention that in a sec. I just wanted to say, I can see Emma is nodding. You guys can't see that because uh, <laughs> the video only triggers with noise. But when uh, Jules was saying you must follow up, Emma was nodding. So <laughs> you, you absolutely need to remember that stage, which is something that I teach all of my clients, you know, when it comes to wholesale selling and, and online as well. You know, if you're not doing follow up, you're leaving some money on the table for sure. Um, and before I talk about the the offer to get started with the platform. I just wanted to also shout out to Laura Klein from Snotty Noses, who I saw watching and saying g'day on this video, who has very successfully used Handle Your Own PR platform. Mm -hmm. And she got some fabulous 
uh, media in, I'm, I'm pretty sure I read it in the Sydney Morning Herald, which I subscribe to, and I know she got elsewhere as well, and uh, she used your platform to send that out, didn't she, Jules? She has, and she's actually been, again, she's been like you, she's been around for quite a while, I think, Laura, with Snotty Noses. Yep. Um, can I just also say that for those of you that aren't sure about how to do PR, I've also got some training programs, and I've got a really decent one that's uh PR boot camp that you can just watch some videos and it takes you through the whole process and you get part of the platform as part of that. So um, the platform, if you know what you're doing, will give you all the journalist contacts. And then if you need a little bit more help, I've got more on the website as well to help people. Yeah, cool. So what I will do is I'll share the, the link um, after, we, after the video ends, I'll add the link to above the video uh, but the, the offer to get started with handle your own pr platform is just a dollar for the first month no two weeks so you get two oh, weeks, two weeks 14 <laughs> days and you get the opportunity to cancel at any time you just need to email us and say it's not for me otherwise you will be upgraded after two weeks to the uh 397 for the year so just be aware of that um, but you can even send a media release out and give it a try. Have a look at what the journalists yeah. are in there. Maybe call a couple. So my advice to all of you would be to get your beautiful images ready and work out what you know who you who you need to be targeting. So your kind of hit list of media based on who your audience is, and subscribe for a dollar. Get your press release out and your follow up done, and hopefully within fourteen days you're actually starting to see some responses. So that oh, you should receive responses within a couple of days. Yeah, see, there you go. Awesome. All right. Um, well, I'll just give you both ladies one last chance to make a comment about uh, PR or about, uh, you know, photography or uh, any of the things that we've been talking about uh, through the masterclass before we finish up. Is there anything you wanted to add? I would just say that you should all be giving it a go because what's the worst thing that can happen? You won't get any coverage and you haven't got any now. But I actually really believe that product PR is the easiest kind of PR and that uh, if you've got the time to do it, you should do it yourself and start to build those relationships with the stylists and you will be amazed how many people will pick it up. If you've got a great shot, um, as we have discussed ad nauseum, but if you have got a great <laughs> shot and you've got a great product and you've got national distribution, you've got about a 98% chance that someone will pick it up. So give it a go. Yeah, fantastic. Emma, did you want to have a last word? Uh, yeah, I just said a few really quick things I wanted to add. Um, the first one, re-follow-ups. I was at an event last night um, where the deputy editor of the magazine was giving a, a talk on this very subject. And yeah. she was saying how important follow-ups are um, because she had recently placed a story that had been in her inbox for three months. Whoa. So you, you might think that it's dead in the water, but people in magazines, there are now maybe a quarter of the staff that they used to be doing all the same work, maybe more because of digital. So they are very busy. So don't take it personally. Um, the second thing I would say with regard to um, maybe feeling a bit bamboozled as to where to start with um, doing product shoots and, and doing, you know, beautiful photography is that there's a website called The Right Fit. I think it's the right dot fit. And you can go on there and you just put the job up that you have and, and your budget and just put it out there. And there's lots and lots of up and coming photographers, stylists, even models um, who are prepared to work for maybe less than, you know, what the big commercial jobs are paying. So it's worth a go. So keep that one in mind. Yeah, sensational. Great idea. And um, yeah, finally, I would just say uh, the Handle Your Own PR platform is so amazing. You know, I've been on both sides of it as a journalist and, <laughs> and also as a, a mentor um, with Jules. And um, one of the best things about it is that you get to attend these in-person workshops um, where people like me attend and we give you, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one feedback on what you're sending out and, you know, how to really target the right media. So I couldn't um, recommend it more strongly. Fantastic. Oh. That's awesome. That's well, beautiful. Yeah, thank you so <laughs> much to both of you. <laughs> really appreciate you joining uh, us today and sharing all these fantastic insights and advice. 
Um, for those of you who are watching the video, obviously this, this recording is going to stay in the group. So if you think of questions later, you can all, always uh, hit me up uh, based on my experience. And also Jules is a member of the Rockstar group as well. And I know that she'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, Laura Klein has just replied to my little shout out before. She said, yes, it was Sydney Morning Herald and she loves the, the platform as well. So very cool. Let's finish on that high note. Thank you both again and have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you, you so too. much for asking us, Catherine. Thanks for having us. Bye, everyone. Bye.